Good evening, and welcome to the City of Topeka Planning Commission meeting. We are a commission appointed by the Mayor and City Council to plan for the orderly growth and development of the community, to hold public hearings, and to make recommendations to the City Council on planning items. Please note the City Council rules state that the public hearings for planning cases shall be conducted solely by the Planning Commission. No additional public hearings will be conducted by the City Council. Tonight's cases are tentatively scheduled to be heard by the City Council next month. Agendas can be found at Topeka.org. For cases that require public hearings, the procedure will be as follows. First, the planning staff will summarize the case. Next, we will hear from the applicant or the representative. Then we will receive public testimony. Public comments should be addressed solely to the chair and are limited to four minutes. Amanda, please take the roll. Or Chris, Ma Amanda? <laughs> Threw me off. <laughs> if, if, if it's appropriate, it might be nice for me to introduce Amanda really quickly. Yes, please, please do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So super excited to have Amanda join us. This is her first day as serving as our administrative officer. So first day and planning commission taking minutes and doing role. So we're really throwing her in. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Dean is present. Commissioner Karen is present. Commissioner, here, I'll let you just read your name, but I'll say present as well. Oh, just I'm so sorry. you No, you're good. You're good. Uh, Commissioner Preisner? Present. Commissioner Taub? Here. Commissioner Nager? Here. Commissioner Pearson? Here. Commissioner Tobobin? Here. Commissioner Warner? Here. And then I'll give you guys a chance to speak. Commissioner Dean? Present. Uh, everybody is present and accounted for, which leaves us eight present for quorum. Thank you. Next, the approval of minutes from March 20, 2023. Uh, Commissioner Dean? Yes. Do you approve the minutes? We'll, uh, we'll put it out here for someone. We'll talk about it and then have a motion. And a, I apologize. A no problem. You're good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move adoption of the minutes as submitted by staff. Do you have a second? I second it. Commissioner Pearson. Thank you. Amanda, would you like to please take the roll? Uh, Commissioner Dean? Aye. Commissioner Heron? Commissioner Preisner? Abstain. Commissioner Kaup? Yes. Aye. Commissioner Niger? Aye. Commissioner Pearson? Aye. Commissioner Tobobin? Aye. And Commissioner Warner? Aye. Appears that um, the minutes were passed for the previous meeting, 7 0. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to declaration of conflict of interest, ex parte communications by members of the Commission or staff. I am going to step out for item number two, PUD 23 03. Are there any other conflicts? Okay. That being the case, we'll start with action item number one, public hearing of Z23-08 by Washburn Avenue, Kansas, LLC. Staff? Thank you, Commissioner Dean. Okay. Uh, this will be a rezoning uh, located at 1404 
Southwest 17th Street. Uh, the rezoning is from C2 Commercial District to X1 Mixed Use District. Uh, the rezoning is going to allow for expansion and reuse of the existing building uh, and also to lessen, uh, basically to lessen the, the rear setback requirements uh, that they need. Uh, with this rezoning, it's, it's not going to be changing the land use or uh, switching it from the commercial and retail that uh, has been at that site uh, for decades now. The commercial and retail use is still going to remain the same. Um, 1404 Southwest 17th Street, that's, that's the parcel address. It's not for the whole entire, the rezoning is not for the entire parcel. It's just for that existing uh, building to the east of the former gas station. Uh, technically, uh, the rezoning will be on lots uh, 228 through lots 238 of the Byron Place subdivision on approximately 0.46 acres in size. As you can see here, so the former gas station will remain C2, commercial. Uh, getting into the zoning map here a little bit, uh, in this neighborhood, in this area at 17th and Washburn, uh, you, you, do ha you do see a lot of, a, a d diverse mix of zoning here. Um, so on the north, uh, you have a lot of uh, multifamily, residential zoning. South, uh, more residential zoning uh, with commercial on the southeast corner of 17th and Washburn there. Uh, to the east, is more residential zoning, the M1 two family dwelling district. Uh, and to the west, you have the College Hills planned unit development, planned unit development PUD, uh, which uh, allows for M2 and C2 commercial district zoning. Uh, future land use. Uh, so this has, this involves uh, the Central Park neighborhood plan along with uh, Chesney Park neighborhood plan uh, and the land use growth management plan as well. Uh, for the subject property, the future land use is designated as mixed use, uh, which is uh, what they call in the uh, Central Park plan is a mix of housing, commercial and employment, balanced mix of land uses in an efficient and compact manner. So again, the, the X1 zoning, it's not gonna change uh, the land use that's gonna still, it's, it will still remain commercial and retail, which is allowed in X1. But uh, yeah, the future land use for that area is mixed use. Uh, you also see that it's surrounded by uh, residential, uh, urban, suburban, uh, low density residential, uh, and of course, Washburn University uh, to the southwest as well. So uh, the proposed zoning of X1, it conforms with the uh, existing neighborhood plans that we have and the land use growth management plan. Uh, the land use, again, it's not changing. This is to allow for uh, an addition uh, to the building and to allow for uh, lesser setbacks. And with that, staff is recommending approval of the rezoning case. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Are there any questions for staff from commissioners? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Culp. Uh, just one quick question. I know that the staff report says that the traffic engineer didn't identify any, any issues. Um, well, there, I, I guess it would be a continuation of both right and left turns into and off of the property. That, that street, the proximity to the intersection gets, gets crowded during certain times of the day. Uh, that, the, the traffic study will be done at the, during like the building permit phase, correct? Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah. 
So there's no traffic study required for a rezone typically. Right. Um, if there if a traffic study is warranted, it's because there's a anticipated increase in traffic resulting from a proposed development. That's kind of a threshold of 10%, like a 10% increase. Um, the other well, thing that I, I would imagine the applicant is is in, assuming or believing there'll be an increase of, of traffic. And I understand traffic study yeah. isn't called for under the regs, but um, so the, the short answer is that there'll be both right and left turns into and out of the property. We don't anticipate any changes as a result of this. I, I'm sorry, Mike, what? We don't anticipate any changes in the, in the uh, access. Uh, if, if the commission has a concern about it, we can raise it with the traffic engineer as it moves forward. Um, and it'll be their decision as to whether they'll require some kind of traffic study or any changes. Okay. Um, and if you, the commission would like us to do that, we can do that. We can express that concern. Well, I don't know if, 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 if there any concern other than mine, and it, it's really just a question. I've just I've seen people exit uh, out of the existing property and going across the the lanes, okay. turning left across traffic, and okay, yeah, yeah, we'll look at it. I, uh, you know, this is going from retail to retail essentially. Before there was a restaurant there, right? Um, so it's hard to. You know, if a business is successful, they're going to have more traffic. <laughs> so, uh, but it's hard uh, for the traffic engineer to determine that uh, on that basis. But we can share that with them. I mean, if there's a concern with traffic safety now, uh, they can look at it and something could be warranted regardless of any yeah. proposal. Well, and you've answered the question. I, the traffic engineer certainly looked at, at how uh, how traffic would enter and exit the property, and, and uh, the, the engineer said no issue. So. They've had the opportunity to comment on it, and they haven't. Okay, okay. thank so. you. Well, 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 one other thing, Mike, <laughs> uh, that, would, that, inc that includes truck deliveries onto the property. That, that would take access off of 17th Street. I believe, uh, I, I actually don't know if, if most truck deliveries would go from the front or the rear. Uh, because they do have an alley in the back, but uh, nothing unless something's done now, uh, they would still okay. be able to deliver. I will ask the applicant. in the front. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for the staff? If not, we'll move on. Is there a representative of the owner here to speak tonight? Good evening, Joshua Blinsky with SPV Engineering. <coughs> representative for the owner. Uh, none of them have attended tonight, so I'll be taking all the questions that you have. Uh, to answer the traffic question that was brought up in the... Uh, I'm sorry. sorry, could you speak up? Sorry. Uh, as far as the traffic question that was brought up in the pre-application meeting, and they are in discussions with uh, the city of Topeka, and it, it will actually come up in the site plan review process as well for the traffic engineer to make any comments. Uh, we'll be providing um, some traffic patterns and if there are uh, truck access to the site showing those turning movements and the like. So there'll be plenty of, plenty of time for the traffic engineer to make any comments or changes. Thank you. Are there any questions for the applicant? Thank you. Oh. Next, we'll get into public. Oh, thank you. Get into public testimony. You'll have four minutes per person. Uh, if you're in, interested in speaking, come up to the podium. Any if none are interested, we'll move. On. Close the public testimony and move on to discussion by commissioners. Is there any discussion on this item? And if not, we'll be open for a motion. Mr. Chairman, yes. I, I move that we approve the uh, staff recommendations on the changes. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's Moved and seconded. Any discussions on the motion? Commissioner Preisner, do you, how yep, do you vote? Ready for a vote. You. Aye. Aye. 
Commissioner Kalp? Aye. Commissioner Nager? Aye. Commissioner Pearson? Aye. Commissioner Tobobbin? Aye. And Commissioner Warner? Aye. At a vote of 6 0, motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Next item is public hearing of PUD 23 03 Topeka Independent Living Resource Center. You do, you know, hand it over to Ms. Pearson. All right. As you said, the next action is PUD 23 03 Topeka Independent Living Resource Center staff presentation. Are you ready? to this remote. So I'll be giving this presentation. Uh, uh, Commissioner? <laughs> Thank you. If I can get to the right. Uh, well, I'm trying to get it to the first. There. There you go. That's where I wanted to be. So uh, this is a application to rezone the property from R1 to plan unit development for offices and operations of the Topeka Independent Living Resource Center or referred to as Tillerick. I think I'm pronouncing it that, that how it's pronounced, Tillerick. Um, so this is a plan unit development without a master plan. Uh, and the zoning regulations allow for that as long as conditions can be established that can be adopted with the ordinance. There's no reason to do a master plan for this project. Uh, no variances are associated with this PUD. Um, the location is 1921 Southeast Indiana Street. It's on five acres of property. Staff is recommending approval subject to conditions with the land use limited to R1 uses and Tillerick's intended use. So this is previously the site of a middle school and later a church. Church was operated as a social outreach and community support program out of the site and Schools and churches are permitted uses in R1 zoning. The proposed use is not a permitted use under R1 zoning, so it requires the rezoning. The property is surrounded by detached single-family homes and the Washburn Institute of Technology's eastern campus to the south. I want to explain something. Uh, in the staff report, in the beginning of it, it says that the requested rezone was PUD with ONI3 uses. That was in the application. After staff reviewed the application, it was determined that it would be better and it would still meet the needs of the applicant if the PUD was not, did not open it up to all ONI3 uses because there are uses under the ONI3 zone that probably would not be good at this location, um, could create some compatibility issues with neighboring uses. And so the recommendation is that it be limited to just uses that are consistent with what Tillerick wants to do. And, and there's a, attached to the staff report, there's a statement of operations, and you can read that. Uh, the first condition in the recommendation refers to that statement of operations. And then there are several other conditions on top of that. So the, the uh, Central Highland Park Neighborhood Plan, which is essentially the comprehensive plan as it applies to this area, uh, identifies this area for an institutional use as a future land use. The recommended zoning is consistent with the neighborhood plan. Uh, it allows the adaptive reuse of this building, which is preferred to letting the building set vacant, uh, and it provides a, a an appropriate transition between a more intensive use and neighboring single family residential use. So just summarizing the recommendation and the, and the conditions, again, it references the statement of operations. All the use and dimensional standards applicable to R1 zoning will apply, except as stated in these conditions. One of the 
elements of the proposal is to allow for a garden on the site, on the north side of the site. Some of the language in the application uh, refers to this as a community garden, but it's really more like an accessory use to this, to this, uh, to the primary use, which is which is the uh, uh, administrative offices and operations for for uh, Tilrick. Some of the other conditions: outdoor storage materials or interoperable vehicles are not permitted. There's a parking-related condition that requires that will require them to stripe additional parking stalls, but this should easily be accommodated with the paving that's on the site. Any expansion of the parking areas will be require permits, and we will review a site plan at that time if it was is if if they decide they want to expand the parking area. Existing mature and healthy trees on the property are to be maintained and preserved unless replaced with an equivalency of landscaping based on species, quantity, current size, and size of maturity. This, that was something that was brought up at the neighborhood information meeting. Uh, there was a neighborhood information meeting held, by the way, for this project. About three or four uh, neighbors attended that meeting and spoke and all expressed general support of what the applicant is proposing to do. And that concludes my presentation. If you happen to answer any questions. Are there any questions for staff? Yes, Commissioner. Um, there was some mention in the stuff provided to us that there might be a requirement of a subdivision plat. <coughs> I guess, like, what determines that? Like, does this need that? So, um, Commissioner, in our, in our, uh, Development code, there's a requirement that before you get a building permit, you're required to get uh, the property property platted, and there are some exceptions to that. Um, we don't anticipate that a subdivision plat is going to be required for this because of the scope of the project. Um, but if that scope changes, potentially that's a, requir a requirement. We do not anticipate that. All right. Makes sense. Thanks. Thank you. I did have a... I did have a clarification I wanted you to make. Up there it says that outdoor storage of materials or vehicles is not permitted, but in the written document it says inoperable vehicles. Which one is it? Uh, it's intended to mean inoperable. Okay. That's, a, that's really a typo. All right. I just wanted to make yeah. sure. I mean, long-term storage of operable vehicles is not really encouraged either. But Okay. Yeah, the concern is that The nature of the use could change. Uh, it involves some locational training and that kind of thing. And so that was kind of a way to just avert that risk uh, of something like that happening. I guess I, well, now that you mentioned that, I guess a definition of that, long-term versus short-term, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming with, their usage that there will be extra vehicles on the property, or maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. So, it, in in one hand you said long term, and then so which one is it? Okay, let me read the. So what's in the staff report is correct. Outdoor storage of materials or inoperable vehicles are not permitted. Okay. Of Outdoor storage of materials or inoperable vehicles is not permitted. That's that's specifically what the recommendation is. Okay. It's just incorrect on the slide. All right. Again, just wanted the clarification yeah. to be sure. Yeah. Commissioner, thank you, uh, Mike. Two things, real quick. I want to. You may have covered this on the off-street parking. The requirement here, if this is approved, they required the 56 parking stalls. The reference in the staff report to 80, a total of 80, that's self-inflicted by the applicant, right? They, they're not obliged. The, uh, the under the heading staff recommendation it says 56. Yeah. That's, Correct. that's the number they so have So the recommendation uh, does not require them to have 80 stalls. They, they provide us with a parking plan. We didn't want to, we didn't want to tie them to that. Uh, we didn't even attach it here because it was really just for discussion. Yeah. 
we didn't want that to be misconstrued as a plan that they were going to develop. Uh, I think once they start looking at that, chances are they're going to find that uh, creating that many parking stalls is more difficult and more costly than they anticipate, and they really don't need that many. Uh, and in fact, the condition allows them to have a reduction below 56 if they provide additional information. Like the other, thank you for that. The other thing is about the, uh, the community garden. I was very surprised to see that's something that the city recognizes as a land use and regulates as a land use. And that's, uh, there's no reference to the city code in here, but there, if I wanted to have a community garden in my backyard in an R1 district, I, I couldn't do it without city permit. Is so that right? Yeah, community garden is different than an accessory garden. So, um, yeah, if you're referring to a community garden, uh, our code treats that as a principal use. So you have a bare piece of ground and you put a garden on it. Uh, someone having a garden in their backyard is just an accessory use. And so we wanted to be clear that we're talking about an accessory garden. There was some uh, intent expressed at the neighborhood information meeting by the applicant that they could open that up to neighbors in, in the neighborhood. That's okay. Uh, there, I don't think there was any concern about that, but it's I, really intended I, I to be. It. It's yeah. just, if you put another marker down at that point in time when we take a look at possible amendments to the zoning code, I, it just it doesn't seem rational to me to, to, uh, <laughs> to have uh, community gardens. Um, you know, it, it, it's a one thing if it's a retail operation, I suppose, but if it's just a community garden, that does not seem to be a land use that the city should be regulating to me. Yeah, so uh, Commissioner Kalp, it was probably about six years ago. No, it was probably about eight years ago, actually. Yeah, don't, don't throw history at me, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> it was a while ago. Uh, there was kind of this recognition uh, in the nationally that cities should allow people to grow food and there should be more, more gardens. And so the city responded by uh, allowing or adding that to the land use table and uh, providing some flexibility to do that as a principal use. And it does require a, it, there are standards that apply and it does require a, a permit, an administrative permit. Okay, I'm, I'm not satisfied, Mike, but I, I appreciate the answer. Yeah, I'd, maybe I can get some clarification from you after the meeting and, and that's something we can look at. We, we uh, as you know, <laughs> we occasionally, every few years, do a, a code update and that's something we could look at when we do that. But, but this applicant's okay. This applicant's got it, got it in writing, so I'm, yeah. there's no, no issue here today for this applicant. Okay. For me. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Is anyone from that organization here tonight? Joshua Blinsky with SVB Engineering again. Uh, yep, I'm the representative for uh, the applicant here, and I also have Amy Hyden. She's the executive director of TILRC, uh, and to say a few words about the project. Good evening. I, I want to thank the commission for um, for entertaining our application and. Also, I think there was a mention that there had been a neighborhood meeting, um, and some of the neighbors have joined us here this evening, so we're super actually excited about that, and I want to thank them for taking out their time and their interest in the project. Um, so this is actually, um, uh, I, I'm the executive director of the Topeka Independent Living Resource Center. We are a disability-owned and operated not-for-profit organization that's been here in the community since October of 1980. Uh, we've lived in a number of different locations and currently live at 5th and Jackson in downtown Topeka. Um, and so, um, you know, honestly, you know, it, it's, it is, it's an interesting, it's been kind of one of the interesting conversations that we had at the earlier neighborhood meeting um, because, quite frankly, the use that we're intending to deploy um, in terms of moving our operations from the core of downtown Topeka where people don't actually live um, to, you know, a neighborhood in the city where people actually do live um, and look for services um, it is not that great. It's actually 
fundamentally not a difference at all in what the previous owners of this building had done when the building was was operating sort of there. And so, um, and so as an organization, um, we aren't we will be operating not just our administrative offices, but the independent living skills services that we provide. Um, we are the assistive technology site for Northeast Kansas, so we have all kinds of durable medical equipment, uh, augmented assistive communication devices, telephones with large, um, large buttons. And, and really what we were looking for, aside from being where people that need services are located, um, is we really were looking for a space that was more, um, more usable and more compatible and more open um, to the people that we serve. Um, and this building, um, it, it, uh, one of the neighbors, I think, actually is a graduate of the school. <laughs> um, and when I first started working for the agency, Topeka Independent Living Resource Center, in the 1990s, I actually had clients, uh, families that I represented, who their families were going to this school as well. And so we have kind of a long history and connection to this community and to this neighborhood. Um, and the space, quite frankly, is, is uh, much more usable for our purposes. Um, it gives us the opportunity to look at sort of expanding our operations and incorporating some things that would include accessible gardening spaces so that people could come in and have, you know, access to fresh fruits and vegetables in their neighborhood. Um, you know, not on, you know, not on a large scale. I save that for my own farm. Um, but certainly have a food pantry, you know, so again, a lot of the services that have existed in the past but haven't haven't been there as the building has fallen into disuse. Um, so, you know, really it, the intention is to take the space as it exists. We have no intention to, it, it already is, trust me, much more building than <laughs> any single organization needs. And so there's not really any intention to expand the operations, but simply to use the space that's there um, to create uh, a more accessible uh, community opportunity for folks in that area uh, to meet their needs in, in a very sort of peer-based way, um, in a way that affords more space, quite frankly, and opportunity for people to do the things that they need to do to access the resources that they need to access than it is an opportunity to expand our programming or to uh, build, build an empire. Um, we really don't, we wanna build a community in a neighborhood and we wanna build a space that supports people with disabilities to live in our community and remain there. So that's, we're certainly willing to answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions? Well, Commissioner Nager. Um, I appreciate, uh, it sounds like a good organization and very meaningful work. Um, and I imagine your assessment of like switching from the core of downtown to this neighborhood is probably appropriate and uh, better suited for you guys integrating. I do want to, a very minor point, don't mean to blow it up, but uh, you said something about the core of downtown not being somewhere, some a place where people live. I actually happen to live in the core of downtown. <laughs> Love it very much. I have a great relationship with my other residential neighbors. Uh, like I said, not key to this at all, but just. No, no, I appreciate that. I, I should have clarified. The people who we serve. The folks who come to us for services yeah. don't okay. don't exist, there. and and quite frankly, uh, the folks that are looking at purchasing the building that we're currently in are looking to deploy more neighbors for you downtown. Okay. So, <laughs> does anyone else have questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there any public testimony? And just a friendly reminder, you have four minutes. Okay, we live, uh, my name is Carol Brown. I live in 1928 Southeast Washington with the graduate from Highland Park Elementary School, not middle school, um, as did our children. So we've lived there a long time. We're fully supportive of Tilrick coming in. We have no concerns. We had a lot of concerns. Um, one thing I wanted to say, when you have a Zoom meeting and you send the letter out, you need to say you have to download Zoom, which we were using, but it did not tell the neighbors they had to download Zoom in order to use it. So in future mailings, you need to say, because we're old and 
we're not good with technology. I wanted to, there was a handout here. I don't know if all of you have it, but on the bottom of page four, it says the land use goal, protect single family uses while accommodating commercial office, multi-family residential with established higher intensity areas. Now, I'm not concerned about Tilrec. I'm concerned about the planning committee using that little caveat multi-family residential and established higher intensity areas. Those would be a concern for us. At the bottom of page four. Now on the top of page five, it says the guiding principles, single family residential land use, which is the majority land use when the neighborhood, which in the neighborhood, that's all there is, should remain viable and be protected from encroachment of higher intensity of land uses particularly within the interior of the neighborhood. I find those confusing. I find on one hand you're saying um, multifamily residential with established higher intensity areas, and then I see that you are wanting to protect our single family neighborhood. So I, if Tilrick left in five years, I don't want you to use this zoning to come back and build, I don't know, apartments or a strip mall or something that would not be appropriate. Now, Joshua has told me um, strip malls aren't going in there, you know, that it's not commercial use. But what does that mean to you? What does four and five mean to you? We'll let you use your four minutes and then address your questions. Hmm? We'll let you use your four minutes oh, and then address your questions. That's about all I have. I oh, just wanted okay. to. I wanted to stay single family or institutional. We get along really well with Washburn Tech. Um, I just don't want a lot of traffic. I don't want something that's going there at midnight. Um, Mr. Hall, can you address her concerns? Yeah, one thing I want to say is, um, you know, goals and policies in a comprehensive plan, that by itself does not change land use that's allowed. Uh, it requires a change in zoning. So if there's a change in zoning to accommodate uh, higher density residential, it's not currently zoned in the neighborhood or not currently accommodated by the zoning in the neighborhood, that would have to go through this whole process. Uh, so R1 does not accommodate higher use, uh, multiple living arrangements or higher intensity views. The R1 rating that you are giving Tilrec, you are not, that does not approve apartments or multi-family. Could, could I make a comment, not to steal your thunder? Yeah. But uh, ma'am, the, uh, you know, like almost anywhere in the country at R1 zoning, carries with it uh, churches and schools as permitted uses. Yeah. And that's what you have here. Mm -hmm. And you have, a, you have, so you have an institutional building that is now vacant, correct? And really, uh, the staff report uh, points, out to the, points this out, that it's highly unlikely at that location to have any kind of commercial or any kind of intensive use uh, requiring knocking the building down. And, and uh, it, it's, this is a, a, a reuse, an adaptation mm -hmm. of the... Yeah. Of the building, and, and you started your comments off by saying that you didn't have any problem with right. with this application, and the scenarios you have about apartment houses and so on uh, are pure speculation, and that would be for another day. Okay. But I, I think the points you're raising, you're raising for that kind of land use, uh, there'd be a whole set of other considerations that the planning commission and planning staff would make about the introduction of multifamily at that location. Maybe it would be fine, maybe not, but but that's not what we have. I think we've got a very, uh, yeah. very beneficial uh, reuse of the property that appears to be acceptable to, to you and I hope the other neighbors as well. So when you look at page seven, that's what we'll be voting on. Okay. And it doesn't have anything about multi-use in it. This may not be appropriate for this meeting, but why does 1921 Indiana own 20th Street from Indiana to Washington? Why is that not a public street? It's got public street markings. I, you're right. At this point, we're not sure what 
this body probably mm -hmm. cannot answer that question mm -hmm. for you. Um, perhaps mm -hmm. someone and staff can lead some guidance after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. I just yes. was curious. Yeah, we, I'd be happy to, to have a conversation after mm -hmm. the meeting with you. Thank you. And thank you to Tilray. All right. Uh, is there any other public comment? No? All right. Um, is there any discussion by the commissioners? Seeing none, I will take a motion. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, you know, I think it's a, it's a very good organization providing a very valuable service to the community. And uh, I would, um, my motion is to uh, uh, adopt the staff findings and analysis as our own findings and analysis and recommend to the city council uh, rezoning from R1 to PUD with the R1 use group. Can I get someone to second that? Second it. Can we get a vote? Call for a vote. Uh, Commissioner Dean is abstained from this vote. Uh, Commissioner Preisner? Aye. Commissioner Kalt? Aye. Commissioner Niger? Aye. Commissioner Pearson? Aye. Commissioner Tobobin? Tobobin. I am sorry. No, you got it. Aye. And Commissioner Warner? Aye. So uh, the motion passes with six. Uh, yeses and one abstaining. Okay, ready for action item number three, 911 Walnut Project Plan. Uh, staff. Commissioners, I'll handle this one. Um, and Rhiannon will be available for questions as well. So. <laughs> okay. Um, so this uh, project relates to the South Topeka Redevelopment District. This was a TIF district created in 2002. Uh, approval of project plans is required to utilize TIF funds within the redevelopment districts. So that's what we're looking at tonight. So this uh, particular project is located at uh, Southwest 32nd Terrace and Southwest Topeka Boulevard. Um, this is a commercial redevelopment of this uh, particular site or area. Uh, if we go back to that previous slide, I don't think I pointed out. Um, so that's the TIF district. In case some of you aren't familiar with the South Topeka redevelopment TIF district, those are the boundaries of it. Um, you can see the old, the previous mall is in there, along with this property and and many others along the South Topeka corridor. Right, so this gives you some idea of the development that will be on that site. Um, the the Bennigans is gone, so that combined with the existing use to the west will be removed and it'll put a new building on that particular portion of the property. And then out front, uh, way out in front of Mainline Printing or the former Gordman's, um, out by Topeka Boulevard, that will also be a new building on that uh, part of the property as well. So. Uh, some more retail type uses, restaurant uses on this site, which is currently uh, 
predominantly vacant or parking lots. So the main uh, idea here with the project plans for the Planning Commission is to review the, the, pro the proposed project plan with consistency to the Land Use and Growth Management Plan. Uh, the, the Land Use and Growth Management Plan uh, calls this area out as commercial, uh, more particularly sort of a community commercial area. Um, these community commercial areas contain large-scale commercial uses that serve multiple neighborhoods um, and may draw surrounding communities and, and uh, counties as well, so the South Topeka Boulevard is considered a, a community commercial area, as would be um, Highway 24 is another one. Um, so the uh, so the land use the land use is consistent with uh, the future land use. There's other policies within the growth management plan that are supportive as well. In particular, um, within within our existing city limits, our comp plan talks about encouraging infill and redevelopment. With, to take advantage of existing urban infrastructure and services and promotes a range of uses to fit within the overall character of the area. And it also mentions uh, creating some incentives to help uh, with attracting that kind of development within our, in, that, are, that is infill or redevelopment within the city. Um, and the TIF is one of those um, fiscal incentives. Uh, with that, commissioners, I'm pretty sure that's my last slide. Um, <laughs> staff is recommending approval of the project plan. Uh, well, is recommending that the project plan is consistent with the LUGMA. Uh, recommends that the Planning Commission move the approval of the attached resolution, finding that the project plan is consistent with the Land Use and Growth Management Plan 2040. Thank you. Any questions to staff by commissioners? Mr. Kulp? Chairman Dan, uh, just make sure I understand what we're doing and what we're not doing. Right. Um, this finding of consistency with the plan, uh, it doesn't wet us to, I mean, there'll still be a, a rezoning request coming forward to the Planning Commission at some point in the future. Correct? There won't be. Uh, it, this particular property is zone C4. No, it's zone PUD with C4 and also C4. There's C4 zoning. Uh, those uses are c consistent with zoning. So. Uh, any future approvals for that property will be through site planning, traffic impact analysis, those sorts of things. Will there be a plat? Uh, no, we've platted that property recently. I don't believe we would have to process a plat, but possibly, depending on how things shake out, there would be a, it'd be a minor plat, though, more than likely, that this body wouldn't see anyway. So if, if this goes forward and, uh, and they proceed to construction, you had a diagram of the parking lot there, and I wasn't quite clear on the configure of the the orientation of it, but uh, during site plan review, you can uh, provide some screening for landscaping. Right, so landscape standards would apply for new construction, our parking, uh, the stacking for the drive-through. They have to accommodate all the cars in, on the site so they don't go out into the, the public rights of way and those sorts of things. So building design will be a part of the, the, the review in the site planning uh, phase. Uh, so yeah, there's a, a, a whole host of items that we touch on through site planning. Okay. So once this, if, if we make a finding of consistency, then th that's the last time we see this project. More than likely. Uh, unless the project changes somehow. Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Is there an applicant representative here to speak on this issue? Do we, does this go through the normal process? No, no public hearing is required. Okay. So then we guess we just go to discussion by commissioners? Then? Discussion and then a vote. Okay. Any discussion on this matter? I thought I, I thought I read in here there were three proposed buildings. Is that did I miss that? Um, yes, that's that's correct. Yeah, so there's two pad restaurant sites and then a retail center, which you're seeing oriented there is the southern portion of the property, is a retail uh, component as well, and it's for twenty. It's roughly twenty thousand square feet total. It just doesn't space. show on that site plan, or does it? I see two restaurant pad sites. Maybe I'm missing it. 
I don't think you are. <laughs> I was just curious. I saw the, the budget space around three buildings and uh, just was curious. Right, so the document would be the thing to pay attention to. Yes. Perhaps not the attachment or the, the exhibit. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, we'd be open for a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make the motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Preisner. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussions on the motion? If not, would you please take the roll call? Uh, Mr. Dean? Aye. Mr. Preisner? Aye. Mr. Kalt? Aye. Mr. Niger? Aye. Commissioner Pearson? Aye. Commissioner Tobobbin? Aye. Commissioner Warner? Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. Next up, communications to the Commission. Commissioners, just a, a staff update, I think. Um, since you saw their faces, I thought it would be good to let you know that uh, Ian uh, Treferin, who was our uh, associate planner, has uh, moved on to a different position. And um, Will H, uh, not Will J, <laughs> Uh, is an intern in our office. You saw him last month. He had his first case. And uh, he, he will not be here. He's not leaving. He hasn't left yet, but he won't be here to, uh, by the time for, of your next meeting and won't be presenting. So he's leaving as well. Uh, we will be gaining another intern, and we'll be getting her in front of you as soon as we possibly can. And then uh, Annie Driver, who was previously in our office, our planning division is moving back to the planning division. Uh, actually, as of today, um, so uh, you will be seeing Annie in the future uh, with uh, some planning cases. Um, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. The uh, cases from last month, did they go through? What, what happened with those cases? Uh, no, they're on tomorrow night at the governing body, all except uh, Eugene and Paramore. The, that uh, case um, had a uh, protest petition um, that need that they tip those protest petitions typically only need 20 percent only that's actually not very easy to get most of the time uh, they were able to get 60 percent of the no notification area to sign that protest petition so that will be uh, we can't do it on uh, tomorrow night because all the all the council members won't be at that meeting um, in order to act on protest petitions everybody needs to be at the meeting uh, so that will likely be uh, the first meeting in may that we talk about uh, eugene and paramore Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Any comments from the commissioners? If not, we're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>